Welcome to Rose Red Homestead. It is toward the middle of September and I have good news and bad news and good news. So I'll tell you what that's all about in just a moment. Well, it is apple season. That, of course, is the good news. The bad news is that the coddling moths got every single one, literally, every single one of our apples on all of our trees. Not just once or twice, but most of them had four or five worms in them. That is horrible news. We lost all of our apples. But the good news is we have a great neighbor who lives just down the road who gave us a whole box of their homegrown Granny Smith apples. And so today we're going to make apple pie filling and we're going to water bath can it. So I've gotten started. Um, I have a sink full of apples right over here. They're bobbing up and down in the sink. Um, I have my jam pan right here with all of the peelings and the cores. If I get ambitious, I may turn this into apple peeling jelly later today. We'll see. I have my, my, uh, one of my favorite kitchen appliances, the Apple Parer Core Peeler uh, machine. And I, this is brand new, and it's my third one. I have worn out two for in, in previous years. And then over here in this bowl, I have started the um, apple slices, and they are soaking in lemon water so that they don't get brown, although some of them did get brown, but I, I don't even care about that. They will be just fine. Now this apple paracor peeler uh, cuts these apple slices at about a quarter of an inch. Now some people really like their apples cut much fatter than that. <clears throat> we don't. We love them a quarter of an inch, so this works just fine for us. Now the reason that we like our apples at about a quarter of an inch is that when I bite into apple pie, I love for it to be a holistic experience. I don't want the crust and big chunks of apples. I want it to be blended, an apple pie experience, where the taste of both blend together to create something better than either of the parts. And that's what the quarter of an inch size does. So I'm going to demonstrate this little apple paracor peeler. <clears throat> with a couple of apples. I have one here with uh, looks like a wormhole. I'm going to show you how I treat that one too. So let's just start with this one. And they um, slide on this way. And then I just twist this handle. And it comes up against this piece which peels it. And then it goes through here which cores it and slices it at the same time. And then when it's done, it pops it off. And so I can slide this off the core and it's just as handy as can be. And so I will cut this top layer off that it still has peeling on it and the bottom layer. And then I just cut this in thirds. And then bring them right over here and dip them in this lemon water. Now we're going to try to make Five quarts. We'll be using WEC jars today. And then I'm putting the peelings and the core in this pan to possibly make jelly later today. So let's deal with the one that has the wormhole in it. Um, if it's just one wormhole, I generally will try to use the good parts of the apple. <clears throat> so we won't know for sure until we get inside. So this will be um, just a second before we know for sure if we're going to use this apple. And I put my hand on the outside here to kind of hold the slices in place. Other way, otherwise they kind of um, string off. Okay, so not sure about this one. All right, so you can see the damage from the, the worm made. And I can just, oh, I'm not going to put it in there. I put it over there. I don't want to use that in my jelly. And it looks like we have a second one. So I'm going to slice 
right down beside that second one. These are all good, except here's a little piece of core that got stuck. A couple of seeds I'm getting rid of. And a brown spot. And now these are all clean, so they can go here. And I'll cut another third. These are all clean. But notice here, there's a little damage from the worm. So this top layer, I'm going to discard completely. And then here's a little piece of core that I'm just going to cut off. And this one still has the skin on it, so I'm going to put that over in my jelly pan. And we rescued almost all of that apple for our apple pie. And I would have used my own apples, except for they were too wormy, too many wormholes. I could not rescue it at all. Now, because this one had a worm in it, I am not going to use it in my jam pan. So these will go in the garbage. All right, I'll do one more, and then I will go off camera and finish getting all the rest of these apples ready until we have enough for... The recipe I'm using makes six quarts. We are going to be using one liter WEC jars, which is about the same as a quart, but my canner only holds five of the WEC jars. So that means I should have enough for making a pie this afternoon, which I plan to do. All right, so cut this in thirds and dip in the lemon juice. All right, I just have a few more apples to do. Getting rid of the core, shoots it into the sink, and this is a good clean core, so it's going in the jelly pan. Okay, so um, I'll see you as soon as I finish with the apples. Before we go to the next step, there's one more thing I want to show you about this uh, little machine. This model is one that attaches to a countertop. It has a suction cup, and so this is really convenient for those of us that have counters, that we don't want to use the clamp-on version. I've had the clamp-on versions before, but uh, this one works just great. You just set it down, and then you move this little lever over, and then it is just as sturdy as can be, and I did all the apples on one setting. So I'm now just gonna put this over in the sink, and I want to show you what we're gonna do next. And so here are our apples. We need about six quarts of apples, and we need to blanch them. Now, some people skip this step, I do not recommend skipping this step, and I will tell you why uh, when we go over there. So hopefully we have about six quarts right here. I'm sort of just guessing. This glass uh, measurer is a, a two-quart measurer, and I'm filling it brimming. So now I'm going to step over here. So I'm going to just pour these right in. And once it comes back to a boil, then I'm going to time it for one minute. Now, um, if I don't know if you can see this, one of the reasons that is good to blanch, there are two reasons. One is we want to heat these apples up. The other is they're full of air. And I don't know if you can actually see some of the air escaping. Remember, it's not boiling now, but you can see that there is some air escaping from these apples. And so it drives the air out and it brings them up to a warm temperature. Now, as soon as it comes back to a good rolling boil, I'm only going to just uh, blanch these for one minute. And the reason we want them warm <clears throat> is because we're only gonna process these for 35 minutes in the canner. And when you bake an apple pie, you usually bake an apple pie between 45 minutes and an hour to make sure the apples are done. So if we're only going to process for 35 or 40 minutes, we want these apples a little bit pre-cooked. And so between this little step of blanching and also the step where we're going to add them to some hot filling, um, the apples should be very well cooked by the time they come out of the counter. So we're gonna wait for these to uh, boil and I'm gonna time it for one minute and then we will come back when all of the apples are blanched. So here are the apples, they're all blanched. I have a ceramic plate over the top. Uh, keeping them warm. I'm going to move this over now to uh, the stove because we're going to whoa, be using it over there. And now let's go over the ingredients for the filling. When I make a regular apple pie just in a single day, um, I will use 
flour usually for the thickening agent for the filling. Um, I sometimes use cornstarch, but cornstarch, flour, if you've ever used arrowroot or even tapioca, none of those four things can be used when you are canning apple pie filling if you want the very best results. All of those things break down in the heat of the canning process and it makes your filling look pretty yucky. If you've ever done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Fortunately, there is a product on the market that we can now use uh, in order to can pie fillings. And it, it is called Clear Gel. And it is a modified cornstarch. And I got this from, oh my goodness, I don't even know. Um, I'll put the link down below the video so that you can see. I got it from Amazon. Amazon has several options. And it is, um, it is a modified cornstarch. It feels it has that texture that it kind of squeaks when you pinch it. So it has that texture of cornstarch, but it is modified so that it does not break down in the heat. So we are going to be using that modified cornstarch, and here it is right here. So I have in this bowl five and a half cups of just plain sugar, and this is a cup and a half of that uh, clear gel. So I'm going to add those two together, just like you would do regular cornstarch. Regular cornstarch um, or cornstarch and clear gel dissolve better if they are mixed in with um, other ingredients. Now, for spices, and this is where you can use your own choices. Um, I love a certain combination of spices um, in our apple pie. One of the ingredients that I just love in apple pie is cardamom. It is just a fabulous ingredient. And so I have found this pumpkin pie spice that has cinnamon, it has nutmeg, it has ginger, a little bit of lemon peel, a little bit of cloves, and cardamom. And so that's exactly what I'm going to use for my spice. And I am going to use um, four teaspoons of this. Well, I thought I could get my teaspoon in there, so I can't. Let me just take a second and pull these off the string here. So I'm just going to put in a tablespoon plus a teaspoon. So, and you noticed, you know, how carefully I measured there. But that little touch of cardamom is just fabulous. Okay, and that's all I'm going to put in mine. But of course, you can um, design yours any way you want to. So the spices, the dry ingredients go together right here, mixed in with the sugar. And it doesn't have to be a thorough mixing. It's mostly just to make sure the clear gel is mixed up with a little bit of the sugar so that it doesn't glob. And really, even in the heat, the clear gel will melt down very nicely. All right, so this is probably pretty good. I'm just gonna run through it with a whisk here for a final gathering together of everything. Okay, so here are the dry ingredients. Then over here I have seven and a half cups of apple juice. This is all about flavor. You can put water if you want. You can use a combination of apple juice and water. Actually, I didn't quite have enough apple juice, so I think I have about a cup of water in here as well. This is three quarters of a cup of lemon juice. That is going to go in later. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add the dry ingredients to this pot. This is a 16 quart stainless steel pot. And the clear gel does make this dust. I'm going to stir it up just a little bit more. And then, here it is, still giving off a little bit of that clear gel. Then I'm going to add the seven and a half cups of liquid. Mine is mostly apple juice. And I'm going to stir that up. And now we're going to put this on the heat. You can see down in here. We're going to put this over on the heat and we're going to bring it up to a, a, a slow boil and we're going to cook this until it thickens. Once it is thick, 
Then we're going to put the lemon juice in and, and bring it back to a boil and boil it for one minute. And at that point in time, we will be ready for the apple slices. So meet me over at the stove. So this has been on for a couple of minutes. The liquid is warming up. I have the lemon juice right here off to the side that I'm going to pour in as soon as this thickens. And I am stirring, stirring, stirring. I do not want this to burn on the bottom. All right, we will come back when it's boiling and thickened. It's going to clarify beautifully. But you can see that this is very thick now. It still is not boiling, almost. But notice that there are little spots of clarification in there. And notice how the spoon looks. It's really important to stir this constantly. Keep it scraped up off the bottom. And I found that my flat bottom scraper was much better for stirring than my wooden spoon was. So this is just about to boil, I believe. It's pretty close. And this is pretty thick. Okay, the, now you can see there are no more floaties. It's all the same consistency. It is beautiful. It's thick. It's this light golden. The lemon juice was, uh, I put it in and boiled it one minute exactly. And now we are ready to add the apple slices. So that's what's next. Let me remove the plate here. And I'm just going to dump. And now I'm going to take the wooden spoon and stir the apples into the filling. The apples were still warm. Oh, this just smells heavenly. And we're going to move over to the countertop and get this filling in the jars right away while it's still nice and hot. Work quickly to get this in the jars. It's very thick. And I'm for sure using a funnel on this one. Now, one of the things about apple pie filling, it has a propensity to boil over after it comes out of the canner. And so we are going to leave plenty of space for these. You know, maybe that funnel isn't such a good idea. Maybe I can just do it this way, I can see better. Oh yeah, this is gonna work just fine. All right, these are the WEC one liter jars. They hold almost the same as a quart. Very thick, this is very thick. Now when I make these pies, I will dot this filling with a little bit of butter so that it will thin this down just a bit. I am going to do a video on <clears throat> making pie crust and I'll show how to do that at that, at that time. I don't think we're going to have enough for me to make a pie this afternoon, sadly. Maybe a little pie which is all we need, actually. We're trying to cut down on sweets. A very little pie. Whoop! I sure did slop that one around. Ooh, hot. So this is going to make five liters plus a little bit left. It would not have made six quarts. All 
All right, now I'm going to clean off the rims, and I have left plenty of head space on these. Plus, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to leave these in the canner after they finish processing for about 10 minutes so that they can cool down before we take them out, which also cuts down on the leakage. And it doesn't matter what system you use, whether you use the WEX system or the ball system, apple pie filling leaks. So we try to take every precaution. Pull these gaskets off the stove. They've been over there boiling for about three minutes. So here is how we do the gaskets for the WEC jars, if you haven't seen this before. And I demonstrate this pretty much, whoops, I have to turn the lid upside down. There's a little groove right here, and the gasket just fits right in that groove. And then I invert it, put it on the jar. This is water bath canning, and so they only need two clips. So here we go, one and two. And this one is ready for the canner. So invert the lid, get the gasket in, place it over the jar, and the clips. Very fast. And of course, I just love the look of these wet jars. And one thing I always do is double check to see that that gasket is flat all the way around. If that gasket is not flat, if it's bunched up, or if it happens to pull out from the lid, then sadly we don't get a vacuum. Now notice when I put these on, this little lip tab is pointing just about straight out. There we go. And um, one of the indicators of a good vacuum is when this starts pointing down after we pull it out of the canner. Now, the canner is um, on outside the water. We just started the water heating up about five minutes ago. It won't be boiling. These jars are plenty hot, so they will go in the very warm water of the canner. And then um, I'm using my pressure canner, but I'm not going to pressure can these. We will do a water bath canning. And so these will be submerged in water uh, to about an inch over the top of the jars. And <clears throat> we will process these for 35 minutes. And then we will let them sit in the water after the heat is off for another 10. And we will um, then take them out. So meet me out at the canner and we'll get these going. So I'm putting the last two in. It, it just looks so beautiful. That filling is just elegant looking in these jars. So I'm going to put this one in. I'm going to move the others over a little bit. And the last one in. And I have a good two inches of water up above the jars here. And because they're covered with water, I don't even need to put a lid on this. This is water bath canning. We will bring this to a boil, and uh, once it has, has a nice rolling boil, then we will time it for 35 minutes, and then let it sit, and we'll come back when we're ready to take them out. So see you soon. Well, our time is up, and um, these have actually been sitting out here more like 20 minutes instead of uh, 10 minutes in the canner. Um, I got a call from my sister and couldn't get away to get these, so here they are. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful they are. So let's put these over here. Check out the tongue tabs, see how they're pointing down. We may get lucky and not have any leaking this time, I hope not.
and the last one. Okay, so there we have five liters of apple pie filling all ready for the holiday season, which will be coming up here, my goodness, in just a little bit more than two months. So this will be more than enough for us to get us through the holiday season. I don't bake hundreds of pies anymore the way I used to. Um, we are going to be doing another video on making pie crust and also um, cherry pie filling coming up too. So watch for those between now and the holidays. And I hope you enjoyed this one and we will see you next time.